Hey guys, how's it going? I'm meteorologist Kylie Burse, and we have been having so much fun telling you guys about, of course, our favorite topic, which is the weather. So I know that you guys are home, you're trying to get some learning done as you're finishing up school remotely. So uh, today we're gonna be talking about clouds, which is of course one of my absolute favorite subjects when we're talking about the weather. And so the Nine News Weather Team, we're gonna be bringing you all sorts of lessons at two o'clock every day on Nine News platforms. So make sure that you're tuning in. Now, when we're talking about clouds today, I wanna to start with the very basic question, which is of course, what is a cloud? And when it comes to a cloud, Cloud, it's actually just a very, very large collection of teeny, tiny, tiny little water droplets that are so small, they're just floating up in the sky. And so of course, the way that clouds are formed is when moist air rises. And as that air rises, it gets colder. And then eventually all that water vapor vapor condenses out of that and then we get the clouds, the water droplets hanging out. And of course, if they get an even bigger, then they fall to the ground. But clouds are really cool because they can tell us a lot of different things and they also happen at all different levels of the sky. So just kind of running you through quickly, we have clouds that are really high up in the sky. So we're talking like 16,500 feet and higher. So those are those really pretty thin high clouds. I really like these because sometimes they block off that sunshine from a bright clear day, but you're still getting to enjoy it. So those would be like cirrus, Zero stratus, zero cumulus, and that's when we can get those sun dogs too. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but do you ever see those rainbows that form uh, really, really high up in those really thin clouds? That's because a lot of those clouds are made up of ice crystals because they're so high in the sky. We know that we know that normally the higher you go in the air, the colder it gets. So all those water droplets freeze and become little ice crystals, and then they refract the sunlight, and that's when we get those really cool kind of rainbows there. So awesome to see. Then you get clouds in the middle, and those are made up of both ice crystals and water droplets. We're talking your stratus clouds and some of your cumulus clouds too can reach into the mid-levels, but we call those alto stratus and alto cumulus. Now your low clouds, those are your really pretty, I call these almost the toy story clouds. They look like they're um, just right out of a picture book, but those are made mostly of water. They can contain snow and ice, but most likely because they're a little bit lower, they're a bit warmer and those are below 6,500 feet. And then you get the vertical clouds. You know the ones I'm talking about. Those really, really cool ones that grow with those giant thunderstorms. So those can grow up to 65,000 feet in the sky. So if you're trying to think about, okay, how high up there? Have you been on an airplane before? Do you remember how high you were when you were on that airplane? Well, these can grow twice as high as airplanes can fly. So we're talking way, way up there in the sky. And actually one of the cool things about our weather computers, we actually have a tool where as storms are developing, we can measure it vertically in the sky. So we can actually tell how tall that storm cloud is. And the taller it is, that generally gives us a pretty good indication of just how strong it is as well. So um, the height of the clouds really important, especially when we're talking about clouds. Now this one, usually my second graders get this because they're just so fantastic, but is fog a cloud? And the answer is yes, it's just a cloud that's sitting low on the ground. And so clouds are amazing. And if you guys are interested, one of the activities I encourage you guys to do as we go throughout the next week, grab a pen and paper, you've got a journal ready to go, and then spend a couple of days writing down the types of clouds that you see. And then you can use this cloud chart, which you just gotta Google cloud chart. And then the first one that comes up is from the National Weather Service. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that in just a minute. So let me go ahead and just pop over to that one. And what's cool about the cloud chart and when you're looking at it online is that not only does it have the list here, but you can click on each one. So if you're seeing some really high clouds and you're not sure, they've got a couple of different examples that you can go through so that you can get a pretty good idea and match up what you're seeing. Maybe take pictures with your mom or dad's cell phone and compare them to what you're seeing online. They've got a pretty good explanation there. So they kind of go into everything and they broke it up like I did too with high clouds, middle clouds, and then low clouds and we'll link to that here as well but a really great tool to have as you go and kind of check out those clouds now before you do i want to share with you some of my absolute favorite clouds and these ones are so cool and they always, I don't know, I guess I still get excited like a little kid when I see them out in the sky. So Kelvin Hemholtz waves. These are a classic, a favorite. And these are formed, they almost look like little ocean waves and they typically happen on pretty windy days. So if you're flying and you see these clouds, it might be a pretty good indication you're gonna run into some turbulence there. But what happens is you've got the wind and the wind we know, it can be at the ground, it can be really high up in the sky, but the wind isn't always moving the same speed, the same direction at every level of the sky. So what happens with these clouds is you've got 
the wind going at one speed on the bottom edge of the cloud, and then at the top edge, it's actually moving even faster. So that cloud that would sit upright kind of just topples over a little bit with those faster winds, but they're always so cool to look at. They're pretty rare too. And of course, you guys, if you ever see some really cool clouds, even just from your backyard, snap a picture and send it to the weather team, weather at 9news.com, or you can just put it here on Facebook, um, wherever you want to put it. We love seeing those. Okay, Mamatis clouds. Aren't these so cool? They look like um, little droplets that are coming out of the sky. And what's awesome about these clouds, they're usually seen uh, after a thunderstorm, sometimes before. Some people think they indicate severe weather. They can, they can be part of severe weather. Sometimes they're just with a really strong storm. But here's what makes these clouds really interesting, or at least I think so, is that most clouds, as I said, are formed when air rises in the sky. Well, these are formed the opposite way. These happen when air sinks down out of a storm cloud and that moist air encounters some drier air and it creates these really cool looking bubbles so absolutely amazing I remember one of my favorite memories with Mattis clouds was actually walking through downtown and I saw them over Coors Field and it was unbelievable so cool ooh lenticular clouds okay a lot of my second graders they end up thinking that these look like a spaceship or a tornado. Sometimes they do. They're really, really cool, but actually they're not associated with severe weather at all. They're associated with pretty windy days. And to get the lenticular clouds, typically you need mountains, which luckily we have in Colorado. So we get to see these here a lot, especially here in the front range. So what happens is you get the air that goes up over the mountain. And then instead of coming right back down the other side, it goes up and creates a cloud. And then it goes up again and creates another cloud. So each gust of wind almost creates those really cool looking rings that you can see here and then have you guys ever heard us talking about those mountain wave clouds those really big clouds um, that kind of take over from the foothills and then they travel east that is just a really big version of a lenticular cloud kind of cool then there's the hole punch or the fall streak cloud now with this one this is actually not made by anything with the atmosphere it's made by humans it's made when an airplane travels up through some clouds and then pops a hole in it now not exactly popping a hole in it they've got those big old jet engines they change the way that those ice crystals or those water droplets are made up and so it ends up looking like there's a big old hole up in the sky which is kind of cool oh these are awesome and these are what i love about being a scientist too they're called undulatus asparatus and these are new within the last i believe 10 or 15 years we didn't know about them before they were just too rare and we didn't have a name for them but what one of the fun things about being a scientist is that we don't know everything there is to know about the weather we're going to be learning about the weather for my entire life and then for your entire lives and then for everyone's lives beyond on that because the weather is always going to be changing and these were one of the new things that we learned about now these are similar in the way that they're made to mammatus clouds but you have a little bit more wind that kind of smooths them out right at that cloud level so really kind of cool to see and i've seen these in person i know this looks like it was photoshopped but it's not they look that cool in person too okay so now it's your turn head outside grab your notebook be all ready to go you can grab a pen a notebook and then maybe just write down the clouds that you're seeing create a cloud log here over the next couple of days and and check out all the different ones. Again, go Google image, um, cloud chart. That first picture that's going to come up is from the National Weather Service. Really, really great tool to have. And then we would love to see if you guys have any pictures of either really cool clouds that you find or of your cloud log, send it my way, weather at 9news.com. Or if you encounter a cloud and you're like, I just am stuck on identifying that one. Send it our way as well, weather at 9news.com. We're gonna do our best to answer all of your questions. And don't forget to check back here every day at nine or at two o'clock. We're gonna be posting a new weather and science lesson. Have a great day, guys.